Hey everybody, welcome back to Never Alone Homestead and welcome welcome back to my kitchen. Well guys, it's that time of the year again and it's starting to ramp up here onto the homestead. As you can tell, I've got a lot going on right here. I have been canning chicken that I processed, my own homegrown chickens. I've been canning broth, so I've got 12 quarts of broth here, 10 quarts of chicken, and I want to show you something other that's a little bit different. Here is my chicken, and you can look at it, and it's, it looks rich, and it's dark, and it doesn't have a whole lot of fat into it. It looks very good, and it tastes dynamite. This is store-bought chicken that I can, and you see that it's a pinkish color. Whenever I've canned store-bought chicken, it always look up, looks like a pinkish color. You see the fat that's in there? That's still, a, you know, it puts off a lot of fat. This chicken is really greasy i mean it tastes like chicken but there's nothing like the ones that i grew up myself and raised up and can these this right here is the way to go so i got one quart of garden peas which got a little bit of potatoes into it and this afternoon when it cools down outside those plants cool down i'm going to be going out there um picking uh some garden peas uh string beans and checking on to tomatoes, they're growing really good. I've got four quarts of potatoes over here. I pulled up two plants, got four quarts. So actually, I got five quarts, and I've been eating off of them. But this jar right here, which I, in the future I'm going to make a video, so please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. But these are my potatoes. All I did was wash them. I didn't have to peel them because the, the skins are not tough. Uh, you, If you're growing your own potatoes, you want to go ahead and get them canned at least by two weeks so the skins will not get tough but since i was canning uh some broth i said well why and got potatoes i'm going to can why can i not put some broth in here and potatoes and see how it does now broth you can for these course for 30 minutes uh these potatoes if you're canning them they're going to be for 40 minutes so since i got potatoes in here uh and broth it's going to go for 40 minutes and I'm definitely going to be doing this again because this is a good way to go if you got broth. And yes, I got my potatoes on, on my skins on here, but they're soft. They're easy to um, eat. They're, they're not tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is good. This is real good. So you can take, you got your potatoes, you got your broth already in there, and you can take and just pour it, you know, make a casserole, eat it just like that. It's really super good. So I'm definitely going to be trying to do a video when the potatoes are ready to come off out there. I just kind of dug up around there and pulled two plants up. They hadn't totally fully matured, but yeah, this is the way to go. So over here, over here I have, this is what I just picked after I got out of church. There's probably, I don't know, maybe, I didn't even count, maybe 18 gold prize squash here. Here's a zucchini. Doesn't that look beautiful? Just gorgeous. And here's a small wandering squash. Now yesterday, what I did is that I had a, a few squash that was coming off and I took, uh, I have a small wandering squash. This is the first time I've ever grown these and it was smaller than this one. And I, so I said, well, let me cut it open. I need to do some research on these. I do know that they, they, they will uh, keep for like four or five, six months in a cool, dark place. And I said, I had one, like I said, smaller than this. I cut it up and I cut, sliced some, um, some gold prize squash, put some onions in there, sauteed it real good, put in some olive, a little bit of olive oil. And it was the bomb. I was like, man, this is better than steak. This is the way to go. So this one right here, you know, like I said, I got to do some research. I'm not sure if this is too big or this is not, you know, it's going to keep on growing. I do know I got to see some Haas tools and on the, on the package of the uh, uh, seeds, it showed the color of these uh, small watering squash, this color. So that's why I got to do some research to see how big they, they do get. Um, is this getting too big? You know, if you know anything about small watering squash, leave me a comment below. Help me out here. Teach me something here about these squash, but I can say it was good. And I would definitely, definitely be growing these again. 
Well, guys, I just want to show you how busy it's already getting here onto the homestead, and the season is just beginning. You know, for those that was determined, they didn't quit with this grand solar minimum, making the weather so crazy, being up into 80 plus and then down to 30, uh, high 39s or 30, 30s, should I say, um, frost threats. You know, I had uh, uh, to get out there. We had a frost and I had to get out there and cover the garden up. They said uh, after our frost day, date that we was going to get a frost. And I was like, oh no, my plants were up high. My potatoes were up to my knees. And if I hadn't been determined and got out there and covered that stuff up with plastic and I bought some buckets at Walmart, I have some cattle panel and made a table and put the buckets up under there and cattle panel on top. And actually some of it I put like two by fours on top of the buckets and put the cattle panel, made a lot like a little table. I put a tarp over that, had thick plastic, took the buckets, made, made tables and just spread it out in that garden. In some areas I even grabbed the coolers and put the coolers and, and put the plastic over just to make that table to help protect the garden. I would have lost a whole entire garden. As a matter of fact, they said it was going to frost. I was out there at 1.30 in the morning with a headlights from the car. Couldn't hardly see. The wind was blowing 25 miles an hour. I was by myself trying to cover this stuff up. And I kept telling myself, don't give up. Don't give up. Because it looked like it was just impossible to do. If you ever dealt with plastic and wind, it is something else. But I didn't give up. I didn't frost. The wind was blowing. I kept thinking, well, how is it going to frost while this wind? But I do know that wind can suddenly just calm down when it was expecting a severe frost. Well, the next day, they didn't say it was going to frost. And it, I kept the plastic, you know, over the stuff. Kept going out there, checking on it, uh, making sure that it wasn't getting too hot. The plastic wasn't touching the plants. I did lose about seven of them because the plants did touch, uh, the plastic did touch the plants. And no big deal considering the whole garden was saved by the termination. I believe we're into a season that God is going to bless our socks off with those that were determined, those that kept holding on to him, kept asking him for help, that kept praying. And uh, this right here is just the beginning. I've got 20 uh, corners broilers out there that's got to be processed, hopefully this upcoming week. And they are big birds. They are huge so i probably won't process it about 10 at a time because i've got to put i'm gonna put them in coolers get that body temperature down and uh so we'll see how that goes probably have to take two days at that because they these birds i pick them up and they are heavy but look at the garden harvest here five quarts of potatoes off of two plants i've got if the potatoes do grow and go grow like the plants look the plants some of the plants are up to my hip the top of them so if they do grow like the plants look, I'm going to have a massive harvest here. Not counting. I got to go out there and pick the squash. Uh, more garden peas coming. And then I just happened to glance at the string beans. I got two varieties of string beans. And I've seen string beans that I'm going to be picking this afternoon. And I haven't really checked the plants um, as far as a small wandering squash. Because I don't know much about these. I just, the only thing I know is they do store very well. And that's what, one of the reasons I grew them is because they do store very well to four, five, six months. And that's, that, that's, that sounds awesome to me. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any uh, questions or comments, and please leave me a comment below if you know anything about the small wandering squash. And hit that like button. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and hit the notification bell so you will know when I'm loading up the next video and follow me on this journey that I've got going on here that God's got going on of the harvest that is to come. I'm excited. I am so excited. Wow. Now this is one week, one week of food, uh, harvest here. Now, I can't say one week of food, maybe for some, but this, this right here is a lot. And that's why I've been saying plant, grow, do new things, learn how to process chickens. Dude, I didn't know how to process chickens. Matter of fact, I said I would never process chickens because I've always had chickens as pets. 
And I do still got some out there that will always be here until they die because they're, they're pets. But you got to separate your mind to what you got to do, what you need to do. You know, there's, the mind is a powerful tool. So I've got these other chickens out here are my pets, but the Cornish broilers, they're my food. And so I don't have a problem processing them because homesteading is a way of life. I don't have to worry about, my daughter says, she says, why do you do this when you go to the grocery store? Well, one thing, look how rich this is. Look at that. I don't have it. I know what's went into these chickens. I, I watched them. I raised them up from eggs to bitties to full grown adult chickens. And I don't know what's in this. I don't know what's in these chickens. But I do know I like this better than this. Now, if you can't process chickens or you don't have time or whatever, this is the way to go. Go get you some chickens at Walmart, Food Line. Uh, look up the videos on how to can chicken. It's very simple. Uh, you just pretty much, you're going to, the way I do it is I cut my chickens up. Sometimes I'll take some of the bone off of it or take the bone out of it. Most of the time I just try to leave the bone in it because that's good for seasoning. You know, later on the dogs eat it just to make it easier on me. I took and take and put hot water in there. You can also um, boil your chicken a little bit, make your own broth, and uh, or take the, the other parts of the chicken like backbones. And if you get a whole chicken backbones, you know, parts that you're not going to usually be eaten and make broth and then pour it into your chicken. Or you take hot water and pour it into your, you know, um, pour broth and pour it into your jar with your chicken. Uh, or you could take and take hot water and pour it into your jar. Just follow your canning process, the PSI for your area, and meat goes for one hour and 30 minutes, 90 minutes. Very simple, very easy. And here we're living on to a hurricane zone. They're, they're predicting a category three, five, and three, four, and five. And so I definitely do not want to leave my meat that I work so hard that I know is good and healthy into the freezer. So this is why I process and then I can. If the power goes out with a category three and four and five, it's going to go out. You got some food that's already ready. All you got to do is pop it open and there is no stress. You're not, you know, you're not freaking out because you got food. You ain't got to rush out there while everybody's buying up the food. You got food. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much. Give me a thumbs up so these videos can get out there in YouTube arena and follow me on this journey here of God producing a harvest for our, for our homes, for our houses. Thank you so much and have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless you.